we all have an inherent desire to try to control situations to avoid pain in the sense of avoiding rejection or avoiding any form of suffering. And so we look for information in an attempt to uh, prevent anything bad from happening to ourselves. Search History follows Anna, a 28-year-old woman who we meet as she's fled from Perth to Melbourne in the wake of a bad breakup. In Melbourne, she meets Evan in a bar and she makes a pledge to herself that she won't look up his social media accounts before getting to know him in real life. But the temptation is too much and when she does find his social media accounts, she discovers that his previous partner, Emily, died tragically in a hit and run the year before. And so Anna is left using Emily's dormant social media accounts to try and paint a picture of who this perfect ex-partner was. I have definitely uh, stalked people online, uh, not just partners, exes, but other people too. And a lot of the time I would say the experience has been bad and I have regretted it. And my reasoning for that is that when you find information that you shouldn't technically know, you then are required to conceal that you know it. And it takes a lot of energy and it can cause a lot of anxiety. Um, and not only that, but we have a tendency to really believe our own narratives without really probing them and questioning them. And so sometimes we can form a whole structure on a foundation that is very unstable and believe it without any second thought. Uh, so my advice would be to always try to go to the source for information if you can. And if you can't go to the source, then maybe it's information that you shouldn't know. <laughs> I think it is very hard to not look people up online um, because we all have an inherent desire to try to control situations to avoid pain in the sense of avoiding rejection, um, yeah, or avoiding any form of suffering. And so we look for information in an attempt to uh, prevent anything bad like that from happening to ourselves. Um, I think the antidote is probably something along the lines of accepting the chaotic nature of the world and just knowing that you can't control things, even if it seems like finding out information is going to allow you to control something, it's just probably false. Um, and so maybe therapy is the antidote. <laughs> As I was writing the story from a perspective of uh, a woman in her late 20s uh, in a, living in a new city who is largely alone, I actually found it really hard to have a character like that walk down, say, a street at night um, or go on dates with people that she met on dating apps without acknowledging some of the thoughts and fears and feelings that a woman has when she goes through situations like that. It kind of, um, it felt a bit disingenuous to leave that out, especially after I have so many um, examples of stories like that, that friends have told me or that I've experienced myself. It just didn't seem like it would be the full picture if um, Anna simply walked down a street at night and didn't think about her own safety. I think that her relationship with her parents absolutely had an impact on the way that we see her behave in the novel. And it was part of my intention to show how we often um, replicate the behaviors of our parents, even if we aren't really aware that we're doing it and perpetuate sort of cycles, even if in our mind we think we aren't. Um, and it, it was really important that um, Anna yeah, it exhibited some of those same behaviours that she seemed to find difficult with her own parents because as part of her growth that we see later in the book, she really um, starts to put a few pieces together there. I would love if readers who identified with Anna um, because they also find themselves 
exhibiting some of her behaviours. Um, I would love it if they felt seen but not judged and maybe also found some comfort in uh, Anna's journey and the growth that she goes through in the story.